Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the seven things I wish I knew when I first started hiking almost 30 years ago. And just to set the context, because context is important, this is aimed at beginner walkers in the UK who are out for the day rather than for you know backpacking or an overnight adventure. The first thing I wish I knew when I started hiking was that I enjoy myself a whole lot more when I've got a light rucksack as opposed to a heavy one. And while I can still carry a heavy rucksack, it's just more fun with a light one. When I've got the heavy rucksack on, I just tend to focus on being as efficient as possible. And I'll put one foot in front of the other until I get there. But while I've got a light rucksack on, you know, I'll stop, I'll explore, I'll go off trail and just explore the area a little bit more and try and enjoy myself. And ultimately, when I'm doing a day hike, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about enjoying myself. The second thing I wish I knew when I first started hiking was to look after my feet. Because nothing kills a good hike better than sore feet and blisters. Now, you don't have to spend a fortune on getting a good pair of footwear, but it's worth paying a little bit extra in order to get comfort. And the final point on looking after your feet is, if you do feel you're getting a hot spot or a blister, then stop and deal with that straight away. Because you can prevent a blister from forming or from getting worse, but once it is sore, it's going to stay sore for the rest of your trip. And what I've found over the years is, if I take a ear reaction on a blister or a hot spot, um, I could stop it getting any worse and prevent that blister from becoming a major problem which is going to stop my enjoyment of the walk. The third thing I wish I knew when I first started was that a rain jacket should really only be worn in the rain and not thought of as a general outer layer because while it will certainly keep you dry when it is raining um, and it'll keep the wind out definitely what I do find is in the warmer months or when I am exerting myself then you start to get a build up of sweat underneath you start to overheat a little bit um, there's no way for that sweat to go so you start getting this really kind of clammy feeling underneath and it just isn't very comfortable. So what you're up for now when it isn't raining is I will use a soft shell jacket when it's a little bit cooler because that gives me a little bit of insulation and lots of wind resistance and some degree of water resistance too if it is you know, a slight shower um, or even better which I prefer now is my poly cotton smock because that is very very highly breathable. Uh, again it's wind resistant, it's shower resistant as well uh, but it's so much more breathable and it's comfortable over a much uh, wider range of temperatures than a waterproof jacket is. So I can wear my, my poly cotton smock anything from 8 degrees up to about 19 degrees with just a t-shirt underneath just by opening up the vents and, and the zips. So it's a much more comfortable option over a range of different conditions. That said, I recommend you do have a rain jacket in your bag just in case it does start to rain because obviously it is the UK after all. Uh, but make sure that's sized big enough to go over the top of your smock or your uh, or your soft shell uh, and only wear it when it is raining rather than as a general outer layer. The fourth thing I wish I knew right at the beginning was not to plan on getting lost in the wilderness for days and days and days and carrying all this extra survival equipment just in case because the chances of that happening on a day hike in the UK are close to zero. You need to remember that in the UK, you know, in England and Wales at least, we're never further than three miles from a road. And in Scotland, even the deepest and wildest part of the Scottish Cairngorms, you're never actually further than six miles from a road. So, you know, all you have to do in reality is find a road, walk along it, and within, you know, certainly within a few hours, you're going to find you know, a building or a car that you can flag down and ask for help. You don't need to think about living off the land and that kind of scenario. It's not a factor. That said, you know, there are short term scenarios you do need to think about. For example, you could get injured and you're unable to walk to safety. So I do recommend you have some minimum kit with you. So the first one is to have either a survival bag or a boffy bag. Uh, and that way you can kind of got this emergency shelter if you can't walk to safety. Uh, I'd also have a small first aid kit and a torch and a whistle to help attract attention to you. The fifth thing I wish I knew when I first started was good navigation skills because they really make a huge difference when you're hiking in the UK. Now what it does, it allows me to, to follow a kind of a pre-planned route where I'll know where all the good viewpoints and all the good sites to see are and I'll make sure that I hit those along the way. Well, if I don't have that kind of route or that navigation, then I'm just kind of wandering aimlessly around and I might miss something really spectacular like a waterfall or a really good viewpoint. The other thing is, it means I don't have to follow the signposted routes like everybody else does because I can plan my own routes and that gives me a lot more freedom to explore. Good navigation skills also have an important safety aspect and they can prevent you from getting into a lot of trouble. They've also got me out of a lot of trouble in the past as well. For example, if I've been injured or the weather's changed and I've needed to change my plans for safety reasons. Now there's been a couple of times where the weather's come down and I've been out in the mountains 
where you know I couldn't go back the way it came and it wasn't safe to continue the way I was going. So I simply had to kind of dynamically reroute on the way and get to the nearest village and then get a taxi back to my starting place. Now obviously a lot of people now use kind of GPS technology and a phone app and they are fantastic tools and I use those myself as well. But even with those tools, you shouldn't underestimate the value of good navigation because knowing where you are on the map and where you need to get to and what direction you need to travel in is only so useful if you find that when you get there, there's a mountain in the way and you haven't got the fitness or the equipment to deal with that mountain. So being able to understand what you're looking at on the map is still a really useful skill, even if your phone is telling you which direction to go in. And the final thing on navigation is with practice, actually using a map and the natural features around you as handrails is actually a lot more convenient than using GPS and the phone app. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it means you only need to get the map out to check your next set of reference features, as opposed to having your head buried in the phone sort of six inches from your face. So it also means your head's out on the walk, you're kind of enjoying what's around you, as opposed to being buried in your phone. The sixth thing I wish I knew right at the beginning was to always plan on the walk taking longer than you anticipated by having a spare meal, enough water, and a torch with a fresh battery, just in case you're coming back later than you anticipated and it's getting dark as you're doing so. Now, there are loads of reasons it can take longer than you expected. For example, you could have miscalculated the route. You could be you know, just simply enjoying yourself so much that you wanted to stop off and explore, or you could be a little bit geographically embarrassed and a little bit lost. There's so many reasons for it. Now, one thing that happened to me last year was I was in the Scottish Cairngorms uh, I was out doing some mountain walking and I saw this peak that I really fancied the look of. It was epic. It was all kind of like shrouded in clouds and it just looked like a real adventure. So I wanted to do it. Um, I looked at the map, you know, and I planned that that would take about three and a half hours. But what I did was I completely overestimated my fitness on the hills and, you know, it ended up taking me about six, six and a half hours instead. Because although I walk every day for at least an hour, uh, where I walk, it's very flat. There are no hills at all. So when it came to the mountainous part of that of that uh, walk, it really knocked me for six. And halfway up, I was really sort of questioning my life choices at that point because I was struggling. So it happens to everyone, and it's definitely where you know planning on that walk take a longer than you anticipate for all sorts of reasons. And the seventh thing I wish I knew right at the beginning was to drink plenty of water because right at the start, I always used to come back with a full water bottle and a headache from being dehydrated. And the two things that really made me change that was one, I got my dogs and I just tend to you know, look after them better than I look after myself. So when I was giving them a drink and I'd give myself a drink as well. And the second thing, a big change that I made was I went from a bottle system to a bladder and a hose system instead, because it's so much more convenient to just drink from a tube that's hanging out your rucksack, uh, as opposed to taking your rucksack off and getting the bottle out. So you just tend to sit more frequently and it's definitely the way to go because it's much more convenient. Now, I've also learned through a couple of times where I've run out of water and once or twice where I've actually got into trouble as a result and it's been a little bit dicey. Um, and that is always carrying out two litres of water, uh, particularly if I don't know if I can fill up along the way. So I'm not passing through like lots of villages with like local pubs and things uh, where I could top up. I'll have at least two litres of water with me, plus extra water for the dogs as well. And once again, I hope you thought that was useful. And if it was, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Until next time.